Good morning, everybody. I want to focus on the governance issue a, a little bit this morning. Um, and the question that I'm asked to tackle is, have we done enough to maintain trust? And really, when we start to talk about trust, we're talking about our board of trustees, our charity trustees, and it's all about good governance. That's what it all comes down to. And when I think about the issue of good governance, I like to think about it as the difference between steering the boat and rowing the boat. So what we do as charities is we're out there achieving our charitable mission. We're very busy rowing the boat of the charity. But we require the board to take that step back and look at the direction we're going in and how we get to our destination. So steering is really what governance is all about. Now sometimes you're lucky enough to have a board and staff and the staff are busy doing the rowing and the board is busy doing the steering. But if you're in a smaller organization where you're an operating board, you still have those two tasks. And so my challenge to you today is to take off your rowing hat at some point during your board meeting and put on your steering hat and to separate out the tasks so you look at what you're doing as well as the doing of the task. So what is the role of that charity trustee? Four challenges. Question intelligently. Debate constructively. Challenge rigorously. And then decide dispassionately. So what we're really talking about here is engaged, proactive charity trustees. There's no room for free riders. There is no room for couch potatoes on the board. We all have a job to do. And those four questions sum up that role of independence, of engagement, and of lack of conflict of interest in the taking of decisions. So what are the public looking for from charities? What are they requiring of you? Where do they look for assurance around that level of trust that Tim just spoke of? A very interesting report came out of Northern Ireland last year, commissioned by the Charity Commission of Northern Ireland, and it looked at public trust and confidence in charities. And what it did is attract the public's attitude to trust. And three big themes came out of that report. Are donations and funds raised by charities used properly? The public really cared about that. Over 85% of those who were asked were concerned with knowing that you use the money properly. The second thing they were really concerned about was whether charities lived up to their promise. Whatever the promise was you made to the public, did you deliver on it at the end of the day? And then in the outcome, did you have a positive impact on the cause you represented? Again, over 80% of the public wanted to know the answer to that question and wanted it answered positively. The third thing they really cared about was were you well managed? Were you transparent about how you both collected your funds and how you spent your funds? So if you're sitting in this room, think about how your charity measures up to those three challenges, really. And if you can say, yes, we actually can say we do all of the above, my additional challenge to you would be to ask you, well, how do you share that outcome? How do you share that findings with your donors, with your beneficiaries, and with your volunteers? So three key stewardship issues perhaps to think about, and they're very high level, and I don't think anyone in the room would disagree with these high level principles, that you should use your charitable funds reasonably and only in furtherance of your charity's objects, that you should act with integrity both in terms of avoiding conflicts in how you make your decisions and also ensuring good stewardship of your funds, avoiding misuse of your assets. And then most of all, ensuring that you are solvent and you remain solvent. It's the going concern question that every charity has to face when we talk about good governance. Because if you're not solvent, you won't be around next year to make a difference. And that's an important one. So my quick short list for perhaps conversation later on, my prompt list to you 
Ensure that you are compliant with your governing instrument. Every charity trustee should know where to put their hand on this primary constitutional document. Every new trustee should be given a copy. It is not something you frame or put on the shelf. It is your reference point for all of the powers that your charity has, and you should be acting according to it. And if it's not fit for purpose, you should be changing it and bringing it into line with what you do. Have you a plan for your charity trustees? A succession plan? When do they arrive? How long do they stay? What's the plan for departure? It's not a place for lifers. We like to circulate the blood. We want the institutional memory, but we want the new blood coming in. Has your charity got a plan in that regard? A board is one of collective responsibility. Who is at your table? And who is taking the decision? Is it the right person? Are all of the people at the table responsible? And do they realize the responsibility for the decision that's being made? Back to our couch potatoes and free riders question of earlier on. We want the information flows. If you are not circulating the information between your staff and your volunteers and your charity trustees and your funders and your donors and the regulator, we are going to have a problem, so we need to keep that flowing. Conflicts of interest, you can't avoid them, but you have to deal with them. So it's about having that in place. And finally, you need to get the good news stories out. Tim mentioned that already. How do you report on the achievement of your charitable purpose, the achievement of your mission? So, so important. So my final point as I hand over uh, next to David is that really practicing good governance is like gardening. You're never going to be finished. The weeds are going to come up every single day. But unless you tackle them on an ongoing basis, you're never going to get there. Do a little every day. Always put it on your agenda for every meeting, even if it's only a case of saying we're doing okay this month but you have to keep tackling it. It's not a checklist, it's a journey for life for an organization. Thank you.